Okay, welcome everyone to Careers in Psychology Alternative Pathways. My name is Tara Malone and I am the Associate Director for the Center for Career Development Regional Campuses. I'm so happy to uh, bring this panel to you all. It's a collaboration between the Center for Career Development and the Psychology Club. So we have the Psychology Club actually uh, on location uh, on the UConn Stanford campus in, in the classroom there. Um, so we have Anaja who's the president and um, Anaja will be uh, fielding questions from the classroom. And then all of you who are on the call, please feel free to use the chat or unmute yourself if you have a question. We'll be going through a series of questions today uh, um, that are prepared and then we'll have an opportunity for students to ask questions as well at the end. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment. I have a couple team members who are on the call. I just wanted to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves as well. Um, this can't happen without our corporate partner relations team. They're such a, a critical um, part of our, of our center because they actually make connections and, and establish relationships with really great um, employers um, who you'll be meeting with today, um, as well as our relationships with uh, UConn alumni. Um, so Christina and Chris, would you mind just introducing yourselves? Hi everyone, I'm Christina. Panelists, thank you for being here. We really appreciate your partnership here at UConn and we're very excited to hear what you have to say to say. Thank you so much. Oh, Chris, you're muted. Hi, I'm Chris Salibis, and I'm glad to be here to, to learn more. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to our panelists. So if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, um, your name, your role, um, maybe what was your college major? Because I understand that some of you were psychology majors um, and your company as well. So could we start with Susie? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Susie Zubkoff, and I am an associate on the campus recruitment team in at AlphaSites, and I'm based out of our New York City office. Um, prior to joining AlphaSites, I did my undergraduate degree at Bucknell University, where I studied history and sociology, so close to psych, not exactly, but close. And then I actually went on to my master's degree at New York University, where I studied higher education and student affairs. Thank you so much. Ashley? Oh, Ashley, you're muted. <laughs> I still do that all the time too. I know, <laughs> years later. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Ashley Gittins. I'm actually a 2020 alum from UConn Stanford. Psychology was my degree. And currently I'm a talent acquisition I'm a recruiter for a company called Right Click, where we recruit different IT professionals. Thank you, Ashley. May? Hi guys, my name is May Arditi. I am the firm risk management campus recruiter for Morgan Stanley. I did my undergraduate degree in psychology at the University of Chicago. And then I also got a master of social sciences with a concentration in psychology as well. Thank you. And then Schindler. Hi everyone, my name is Schindler August. I am uh, the staff assistant and intern coordinator uh, for the office of Congressman Jim Himes office in uh, District 4. Um, I was a psychology major at Sacred Heart University and I'm currently pursuing um, uh, sports psychology in, um, you know, at uh, the University of Western States. Great, thank you so much. All right, so one of the reasons uh, this panel came together is because we, we were having a conversation with the executive board of the psychology club and we're just kind of talking about what are some common questions that come up for students and I know on the career development side I get this question and then it's also question, a question that comes up amongst psychology peers. Um, what can I do with my major um, when I graduate? What are some opportunities that are available to me with an undergrad psychology degree? Um, and you know, we all know kind of the traditional pathways of going into counseling and becoming a psychologist or going into research. Um, but we really wanted to put this together to show the breadth of opportunities um, and options that are available to psychology students because of that 
core foundation, those transferable skills that you're learning from your, your major. Um, and this goes for all liberal arts majors. So I'm glad, Susie, that you're also representing history and sociology as well, um, because we, we may also have students on the call um, with other liberal arts uh, degrees. So my first question to all of you, just you know, before getting into some of the opportunities that you offer within your organizations, going back to, to thinking about yourself and your undergrad, what, what did you feel that you gained from your undergrad liberal arts degree, psychology degree um, that helped prepare you for your career today? Um, so what, what, what things um, you know, did you gain from, from that experience? Can I go? Sure. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the main thing would honestly be just to be kind of open and flexible to different people and their mindsets, how they do things. Just like when um, I know in psychology, we learn about all different branches in psychology, right? And all these different um, theories that were out there and different psychologists. So it's kind of like taking that into the workplace. Everyone's going to do things a little bit differently. That doesn't mean it's wrong, but just being flexible to trying to understand those different paths of doing something. So um, I can most definitely agree. Um, I think uh, one thing for me, I was involved in a lot of internships and I did some research as well. Um, so connecting with different types of people is, you know, most definitely um, a great source to be able to know exactly what you want to do. Um, you know, we don't really all know what we want to do at a certain point, especially in undergrad. Um, but, you know, kind of seeing, uh, getting guidance from your professors or different people who have been in the field and been in different organizations is definitely a big help. Shiller, could I ask a follow up question? What, what type of internships did you do during your undergrad? Um, I did a lot of internships um, in the hospital. Um, and I, I was um, a biology major before I switched to psych, um, but I did finish on a pre-med track, so psychology pre-med. Um, I had big aspirations to become a doctor, and maybe that will be true in the near future, who knows? Um, but um, a lot of internships in the hospital. Um, I also did an internship um, in, I would say, kind of a chiropractic office, so a lot of, um, you know, kind of health professionals. And also I worked closely with different organizations um, tied into um, playing sports at my university. So a lot of nonprofits and things of that nature. So it was kind of like a, a wide range of, you know, opportunities that were, you know, handed to me. Thank you. Probably not handed, probably you had to, <laughs> it was sure, all you. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wrong turn there, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> May? Yeah, I was just going to say, so if any of you know you Chicago, we are very much a school that is more about theory than application. So I will say that I didn't learn a lot of applied psychology. It was a lot of, you know, theories and like basing, you know, decision making on that. I did have a particular interest in industrial and organizational psychology. So that's business psychology. And so I was able to take a number of classes at Booth which is our business school and so the number of things that I actually learned about was how people make decisions and that has been really helpful in navigating I guess a corporate workplace there are some people you get to learn a lot of different personalities a lot and you get to learn about how different people think and so that's been really helpful I will say the quantitative side of my psychology major has also been really important so with psych and any social science, you're going to learn about statistics and modeling. And so those things have come really handy when I want to do data analytic analytics. Thank you. Susie? I think just to add on to all of this, I think the two skills that I've leveraged the most since my undergraduate degree are really like my critical thinking skills. And I think that translates to any degree, any industry that you want to go in. And I think um, that's something that's really, I think, taught in undergrad, like regardless of the major, as well as strong communication skills. I had so many presentations when I was an undergrad, um, whether it was in small forms in my classroom or a larger form across a major. Um, and I think, you know, having those strong communication skills and going into interviews or, um, you know, having coffee chats with employers or things along those lines are just really, really helpful skills to have in your, your back pocket or in your belt so that you can utilize those for, for future opportunities. Thank you so much. So I know all of you. Oh, I have another one. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, another part of 
psychology is like writing reports and I'm just pretty sure like a number of you a number of you have done that but like the writing skills that you get where it's more scientific writing like right straight to the point that's really helpful in the workplace as well. Thank you. So I know all of you um, review resumes for uh, for positions, and you know you probably get a lot of applicants. Um, so let's let's switch gears to you know your experience being a recruiter or a hiring manager. Um, what sort of entry level positions um, is your organization hiring for, or what types of, of positions do you typically have available? And in your experience with reviewing resumes and interviewing candidates. What is the best way for um, a new a new job seeker to stand out in that application process? Uh, maybe what are some of the the do's and don'ts of that process? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say I know. I remember my first recruiting job, right? We had a ton of internships and we also had this um, rotational program. So they would go into the sales department, IT, and then after each department, at the end of the year, they get to pick where they want to land. So you could imagine we had a ton of candidates flood in for that. But the ones that really stood out were the candidates that would connect with me and the other um, recruiters on LinkedIn and add a message. So just like that personal touch really made them stand out, or if they found our email through the website, just sending us an email and showing us their interest in it. Um, that's something that, you know, as coming into the environment is a great thing to do. Just making those personal connections. Uh, for my office, um, for the congressman's office, I think it's a, a mix of things, um, but one concrete thing would definitely be um, when I'm looking at, um, Resumes is uh, just a human being. I think like when it comes to politics, um, you know, a lot of people are wanting to put on, you know, how many internships had they were involved with or who they know in terms of their connections. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you are becoming a staff member. We do, you know, know that interns are very, very important um, in any office and in any setting. So coming into the office, we want you to gel well uh, with the staff members, with the work demand um, and everything all together. So making sure that we know, you know who you are and you know, what your interests are. And you know, based off of that, you can you know, build kind of like a rapport in the office um, of kind of getting a personal uh, experience in the internship. And Chandler, can you talk a little bit about what the internship is um, with the Congressman's office? Sure. So um, in our district office, we deal with um, constituent services. In our DC office, it's more um, kind of legislative and, um, you know, different things of that nature. But with us, we deal with a lot more people. So answering phones, um, you know, drafting letters, uh, drafting certificates and different things. So a lot more um, office oriented. Um, but within that, I think, you know, with different times there's like different heat so as of right now like our office is very very busy as everyone would imagine as the what's going on in the world um so our interns are I would say well equipped in getting all the information that we have to give to them um you know answering phones creating cases um you know working with federal agencies as the district office does I'm happy to, to oh, okay, I'll, I'll jump in here. So um, to give a bit of background on, on what Alpha Sites is and, and what we're recruiting for. So Alpha Sites is a global information services firm and we provide our clients with knowledge on demand and more concretely what that means is our clients will come to us with a question they may have about a particular industry or a knowledge gap that may exist for them. And our client service team will find industry experts who have that precise knowledge or background that our clients are looking for set them up for a one-on-one -on -one interaction with the hopes that our clients can make a better and more informed business decision after that interaction that our team facilitates. So um, we are looking to hire both interns, so that's for rising seniors, and full-time roles after, you know, once upon graduation for our client serve options client service team opportunities in our New York and San Francisco offices. Um, and I think what you know makes candidates stand out to me when I'm reviewing applications on the phone or in interviews with them are individuals who 
are excited to learn and take in feedback. We have a big feedback culture at Alpha Sites. We very much have a promote from within culture at the company. So we want people to learn and grow and develop like from day one. So feedback is a big component. Um, strong, as I mentioned, uh, communicators and confident communicators, because you will be on the phone with industry experts, you're going to be the face of our company to our clients. So, um, you know, be able to be a confident communicator when you're dealing with these, you know, top tier clients that we work with. Um, and interested individuals who are interested in working in a metrics driven like business environment. Um, all of our uh, client service team members have like targets on a monthly basis. So if you're motivated by, you know, targets, um, I think that would be a really exciting opportunity for you. So I think if you're able to demonstrate that in your resume based on, you know, um, the experiences that you've had or be able to kind of, you know, shape the experiences you've had to kind of fit in with job descriptions like that, I think that would be a great way to kind of, you know, put your name out there and, and make yourself set, stand apart if you're able to shape those experiences to align with what a job description kind of lays out the responsibilities to be or what the requirements of the job to be. Okay, um, so Morgan Stanley, if you know it or not, is a global financial services firm providing a range of investment banking, securities, wealth management, and investment management management services. And so I know it's a little hard sometimes thinking, you know, what could I possibly do at an investment bank when I don't have a financial background or business background. And so for me, I'm actually, so I recruit for firm risk management. And this is actually one of the divisions that we really are trying not to get econ business finance majors. We want people from all backgrounds. Um, I think psychology would make almost like the best home you know, for like for risk people, just because a lot of what we're doing is studying risk aversion, selective attention when it comes to investments. And so basically what I, whatever I look for when I'm reviewing resumes is seeing if you're a hard worker, if you are willing to learn, you have intellectual curiosity, and you have really taken time to kind of strengthen all of your, all of these skills. So this is kind of in the form of, have you done a number of student organizations that you're involved in? Have you gone outside the classroom and learned other skills? Um, I will say that having programming skills is a definite plus. I know in psychology, if you learn SPSS or R, that's really helpful. I'm sure you'll have to learn one of those at some point. Um, I also look for people who do have good communication skills. So if you're ever running your resume, um, you know, people who are able to consolidate what everything that they've done into only like three or four bullet points that's really great I like people who do a paragraph you know it means like you can't like narrow it down to what's important so that's also another thing that I look for um I do appreciate it when people do ask you know try to contact me and that always shows that you have a genuine interest um so that's always good and just like trying to figure out think of everything else that I look at um, but you definitely don't have to have finance or econ as a background, as long as you have those kinds of skills, critical thinking skills, problem solving skills. Um, if you take any kind of relevant coursework that requires some kind of quantitative analysis, that's also good. You led right into my next question, May. Thank you so much. So um, for, for a student who is majoring in psychology or another um, liberal arts um, major, how, how can a student translate the value of their, of their degree, of their, of their major, what they learned in the classroom and outside of the classroom um, for a position that maybe isn't seemingly related. Um, so you started to touch on this, May, already, but um, any, any other tips on how to communicate um, a fit between psychology and uh, in one of these, these career paths? So I can just continue mm -hmm. on to what I was saying. So I actually just graduated last year. So I, I definitely, you know, the application process, recruiting process, so actually marketing my own psychology skills, that's pretty recent for me. Um, I would definitely say the way that you look at certain problems, a very, you know, scientific method is always really great. You know, you, you think you know what the answer is and you want to go through ways to solve it. So as long as you can articulate how you think in a way that's structured and sees an end goal and like how you work for it, I think that's something that you can do that will impress a lot of interviewers and just like showing you how you, showing them how you think. 
I think um, for the roles that, that we're recruiting for, you're, you're in a client facing role, you'll be communicating with people on a daily basis, you'll have to kind of disseminate information that's translated to you over the phone and break down if that's something that our client is looking for. And so I think with a psych major with a liberal arts education and background, like those are all skills that are taught innately in, in your fields of study. So I think marketing that to say if, if you want to work in a people function or a people role that that is what your degree is about it's about understanding people and you know how to think through you know problem solving and critical thinking and so I think if you market yourself to be like that's what I've studied and that's what your firm focuses on um, that I would be a good fit for you um, and think about how you can utilize those skills developed and even looking at like your syllabus and like what kind of like the outcome should be for a course and how that kind of can be a way that's like uh, valuable for an organization. Um, and I think, again, if you want to work for me in a people facing client facing role, um, you develop that in, in a psychology major. And so how is that valuable to me as a recruiter for alpha sites um, is that you can offer that skill based on your psychology degree. I think it's uh, very important to come across, um, you know, confident, but not really in, you know, an arrogant way. Um, just very willing, I'd say, um, and open. I think Susie um, said something about feedback, um, you know, very willing and open for feedback, um, knowing that, you know, you may not be, um, you know, the best experience, you know, in terms of where you would want to go, um, but you are open to feedback, you're able to take in all the information and properly, you know, communicate it not only with um, the people that you'll be in the office with, but, you know, everyone else, um, knowing how to, um, you know, basically represent uh, the organization um, that you are, you know, trying to be able to, to get a part of. No, and to kind of piggyback off of everyone, um, since I too am a recruiter and what we kind of teach in our company and our training is you're gonna be a people expert. So definitely any, you know, personable skills that you learned while you're in psychology, um, back to, what May was saying in organizational psychology, just thinking about how other people think and just applying that you're aware of that and you know that, talking about that in an interview, even just talking about what interests you most about psychology, because they really want to hear where you're coming from. You know, they can hire anyone, but they're looking to really hire a person. So just expressing what you enjoyed most truthfully about your degree is very helpful too. All right, thank you. So I know we've been talking a lot about what um, students are gaining within the classroom um, with their majors. So I want to talk a little bit about what happens outside of the classroom. I, I often have these conversations with students that, you know, you can major in in almost anything, but then you can kind of craft your, your career path from some of those things that you're doing outside of the classroom. Um, so I wanted to actually, if it's okay, Ashley, start with you, just because I've had the pleasure of working with Ashley um, when Ashley was a student. And I, I just love the fact that we're able to bring her back on this panel. Um, and in particular, I'm thinking about you with this question, um, what types of experiences do you recommend that students gain outside of the classroom to complement um, their degree. And I was wondering, Ashley, when you answer that question, if you can touch on some of the experiences that you had that led you to your career path, um, because I know you didn't know that this was going to be your career path early on. Um, it was something else. <laughs> No, yes, no, absolutely. There's a few other things before I really figured it out. But um, what the great thing was with Stanford, when I, so I transferred to Stanford um, after I did my associate's degree. So I came in and I was a junior, but I knew what I liked to study in school, but I had no clue really what job I wanted. So one day I went into the Center for Career Development to get my resume reviewed. And that just opened a huge gate of opportunities. So with that, I always would try to attend networking events. I didn't realize how important it was to network until I was in the job search. That's gonna help you tremendously. Cause also when you create a network, it creates other people who you can ask questions to, who you can vent to, who you could get advice from and who also can help you land that next position. So a really great networking event was the um, career develop the career fair. So that way you get to talk to other employers and just have a conversation with them. And after speaking with them for about like five or 10 minutes to get their business card, then to follow up with an email or add them on LinkedIn and then follow up with a message, just any little thing to just help build out your network wider and wider would be extremely beneficial. Um, 
always getting your resume updated and reviewed. Sometimes you, you know, you blast out your resume to a lot of different applications or you do it once and you think it's great and it could be good, but there's always room for improvement. So, you know, constantly, you know, making appointments for that would be great. And also, um, doing other little events like practicing your elevator pitch. That was a big one that we had, which was extremely helpful. And your elevator pitch would change as you get more experience, as you gain more confidence. But um, that was the big key too. With attending all of these career events, it just helped build my confidence. So I can better talk about my skills. And then I can also learn there is so much stuff out there. It's okay if you don't know what you want to do, but it's just great to explore. That's how you're going to find it. Thank you. So um, anyone else want to comment, what experiences would you recommend that students take advantage of outside of the classroom? I would definitely take advantage of doing research. Um, research is so important and you'll gain so many different skills, like no matter the kind of research that you do. So I did about three and a half years of neuroscience research on campus. I was running EEGs for spatial attention and memory. And then when I started my master's thesis, I was doing behavioral research. So looking about how you can get a certain you know, reaction from someone saying and like phrasing, using phrasing. And so through all this, you learn how to think of a hypothesis and test it. And I think just the way that you go about solving problems just gets a lot better. And like, it makes you a more flexible thinker, especially when you run into a snag. And I think that's really important. And when it comes to job searching, you know, research, whether it's market research, financial research, um, any kind like behavioral, social, social science research, it's all going to be important and you get a lot of skills that you can market it off. That's one thing I would say to, uh, to do outside of school. I think um, this is obviously easier said than done, um, but I think on campus leadership and whatever capacity that you can find that in, if that's for the psychology club or if that's for, you know, um, if you're in Greek life, if you're on a sports team, you know, being a leader and setting yourself apart and taking initiative to go above and beyond of like the general, you know, expectations or requirements of being, you know, a club member or something like that just shows that, you know, you want to lead a team and that you want to collaborate with others and that you're interested in making an impact on your organization. I think it's something that I get really excited about when I see that on a resume. Um, and definitely if you have on-campus employment, if you, you know, are working part-time somewhere, if it's at a restaurant, if it's in the service industry, whatever that is, because that shows that I think that you're developing skills that um, are certainly invaluable. Again, I'm this is like my buzzword for the day, but in a client facing role, um, you know, developing those skills are, are extremely invaluable. And I think that um, would translate really well to the, or the um, opportunities that we recruit for. So again, I know it's easier said than done than for me to say like, be a leader, but like try to put yourself out there, like look for um, leadership opportunities. If there are employment opportunities on campus or off campus, I think that really goes a long way and something that I always am looking for on a resume. No, I think you bring up a really good point because I, I know that as college students, um, I'm always blown away by how busy um, our UConn students are with everything that they're juggling. So I will say with uh, getting involved on campus, like you said, with a leadership opportunity, it's quality over quantity. So, you know, choose like, you know, one thing that you're going to be involved in that you can really um, make contributions to and, and use it as, as something really positive for your resume. So I definitely echo that. Yeah. And I think on that note, sorry, and then I'll, I'll pass it on to Schindler, but I think in, in this role specifically, like you manage multiple projects, you, you do multiple things at once. And I think to demonstrate that you're a multitasker and able to, um, you know, handle being a student, you know, also being a leader and, you know, having different priorities, different deadlines, different expectations from different individuals, I think translates to many different contexts, like beyond just Adolfo sites, but I think shows that you can handle a lot on your plate too. I agree with everyone, um, you know, on the panel. I think there are, those are all great points. Um, I think from the beginning of undergrad, you know, we always get, you know, get involved. There's so many clubs to get involved in. Um, for myself personally, I think I got involved um, a little too late in my college career, um, but nonetheless, I did get involved. So um, with a lot of, um, you know, programs, a lot of, um, you know, charity-based, um, nonprofits and different things like that, because you get to meet so many people. Um, and I think if you have, um, you know, if it's for completing a, a course requirement, 
or just something that you want to do um, all in all, it just helps you so much, you know, getting into the work world, uh, being able to put that on your resume um, and explaining exactly what you did in each of those roles. So, you know, being involved, um, you know, all across, you know, the, the spectrum of, you know, whatever it may be, I think it's very, very important to do so. Thank you all so much. So I don't want to hog the question. So I'm going to turn it over to students now um, or, or any staff members as well, if anybody has questions. And Psychology Club, maybe um, we can just have one spokesperson if there's some questions from the room, or you can also put it in the chat. And those who are online, feel free to unmute yourself to ask a question, or you can put it in the chat. So for, hi guys, my name is Anaja McLaurin. I am the president of Psychology Club. Um, I do have a question for the panelists. Um, when do you think would be, when do you think um, would be a great time to start doing internships and like um, jobs during the, during the undergrads? So the question I'm gonna was, say, yeah. oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't know if you wanted to say the question again. Yeah, so just, just to repeat, so the question is when, when is the best time to do or a good time to do an internship or a job um, during your undergrad? Yeah, so Morgan Stanley is a little bit like it's an investment bank and like all the banks, we recruit a year before the internships actually happen. So right now we are currently recruiting for our 2023 summer analyst program. And so right now we're targeting sophomores. So, but the program will happen between your junior and your senior year. So that after you do the program, you would most likely, if you do well in the program, get a full-time offer to start after you graduate. So that'd be the best time. Like junior, junior summer is a really important time for internships. Yeah, same with Alphasite that our, our internship opportunities are, are for rising seniors. And um, I'm not sure if um, this question was more about like the internships that we're recruiting for or just like in general, like when to have internship experience under your belt. Um, but I think, so again, like we recruit starting for rising seniors, we have um, opportunities for sophomores or second year students in like an early ID program called um, Emerging Leaders, which is like a one day virtual program that introduces you to alpha sites and um, would have the potential for an accelerated interview process for our summer 2023 internship program. Um, but I think in terms of more generally, like how to spend your summers and the experience that you have, I think it's important um, definitely going into your senior year to have some sort of internship opportunity. But prior to that, I just think, you know, utilizing your, your time when you're not in the classroom in a productive manner, if that's doing research, if that's working, you know, at like I mentioned before, like a local restaurant, if you go home and you, you're you not ready to have an internship, like a, in a corporate setting, perhaps. Um, but I think if you, like, I always sometimes I'm like, what were you doing between, you know, your, your summer going into college and then between now and why is there such a gap in your in your summers and how did you spend that time and were you just kind of like hanging out with friends or were you doing something that was you know helping you for your future career so I definitely think having some sort of experience under your belt if it's not like a formalized internship but doing something is really important between your summers more specifically for um, our internship, it's an all year round internship that's um, offered um, for high school and college students. Um, so I'd say we do have a lot of um, high school applicants, um, you know, because of the availability of our internship for them. So I'd say, you know, being able to try to look for opportunities, um, and I know we're all college students here, um, graduates, but looking for those opportunities um, that cater to um, not only to you, but also your schedule. So making sure that you're able to um, be a part and fully be a part of um, the internship or you know whatever you, you want to get involved with. Um, making sure that, you know, maybe during that semester, if you have too many classes or too many credits, um, you know, you could probably wait until the next one so you can be able to get the, the best out of that opportunity. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, and I kind of agree with that too. Like a lot of internships are going to say that it's going to, you have to be a junior or a senior, but honestly, 
trying to get in as soon as you can. My first internship, it was for a nonprofit. So they were much more flexible in terms of like the hours and the start date. And I managed to do the internship while I was also in school. So I would say targeting different industries and especially targeting different companies that are local to you. So then it could be more flexible, but honestly, just as, as soon as possible as you can get in there would be great. Other questions? Okay, question in the chat. What are some things you wish you could have done better or worked on while in college now that you're in the real world? I'm gonna say, I wish I had a little bit more fun in college. <laughs> um I was like one of those like very academic students like during the summer I would like go home like my freshman sophomore summers I would like go home and I would work at like a nonprofit theater but then during the school year and the next two summers I either did like a language program or I was taking classes or I was doing research on campus um so I would definitely say like try to have more fun like don't need you do really don't need to worry so much on your career unless you want to do investment banking um <laughs> then you got to start when you're a freshman um but I would say also maybe to do a little bit more like student organizations um get a really you get to meet a lot of different people and you never know like when that will be helpful um so I'm gonna say that like be more involved on campus <laughs> I would agree with that um just getting more involved um on campus and doing like clubs and um you know different things on, I was a, um, I played soccer in college. So, um, you know, if you're a college athlete, you know, it's like, it takes a lot of your schedule and it feels sometimes like a full-time job. Um, but, you know, towards the end of um, my, like my junior and senior year, I was able to like join more clubs. And um, I think that was, you know, really good with just connecting with people, meeting new people um, and not having like the same, you know, setting where you see the same people all the time. So that's definitely what I'd encourage. Yeah, and also to kind of to piggyback off of that, joining organizations that might be outside of your interest or maybe something that's brand new to you. Because just that whole process of learning something that you've never done before or meeting a group of people who you would not have because you don't share similar interests, it just like widens your horizon too. So definitely go outside of your box and your comfort zone. Um, this is interesting because my, my piece of advice is a, a little different from everyone else, but I think it's also understanding and knowing that it's okay to say no to opportunities too. I think there were times that I overextended myself and that I like really wanted to get involved in everything and I wanted to do everything. I remember Bucknell had like a club fair and I was like, ooh, like I want to do everything. And then that was just ridiculous that I thought I could while being a full-time student. Um, so I think just like respecting your own boundaries and being okay and like definitely being involved. I was very involved as an undergrad, but like knowing when to like, you've hit your, your cap. Um, and then like maybe, you know, after a year or two being involved in organization and, you know, moving on from that and getting involved in something else. So um, I definitely think like respecting and knowing your boundaries and not overextending yourself to then create a really stressful uh, like midterms or final seasons for yourself or something like that. Another question? I actually have something to add on to the previous sure. question. Um, I'm going to say it's like really, I would have loved it if like I knew that it's okay for things to change, like for your plans to change. Um, when I was a senior, I was thinking, oh my gosh, like I'm going to be applying to a PhD in psychology. I'm going to, you know, finish that in like six, seven years and that that's it. Um, and so but I made the decision to actually take like what one or two year gap year to work in industry just to make sure that PhD and going to academia was something I actually really wanted to do and that was kind of a hard decision because I knew PhD cycle is, is a little bit different a little challenging but I'm actually really grateful I made this decision because now I'm kind of rethinking that track as well so always be open to things changing nothing is ever set and it's like okay to do do something that you weren't planning on doing 
Thank you for that. So I'm going to bring up a question. Um, Ashley, you mentioned the career fair. So I'm gonna ask a question along with a shameless plug. So our spring career fair is March 30th. So that's the virtual spring career fair. Um, since the pandemic, we've been uh, primarily doing uh, the regional campus career fairs virtually. Um, they're open to all students all, all um, throughout UConn. Uh, but you know they there are opportunities to meet either one on one with uh, with a recruiter or in small group sessions. And as recruiter and hiring managers, I know that you all have had experience doing career fairs or info sessions with students. So any tips that you have for students on how to prepare, how to make a good impression um, at something like a, a career fair, especially when it's virtual? Okay, I'll go, sorry. Um, I'd say, uh, you know, definitely taking all the information that's being given, um, you know, if you have pen and paper, write it down, if you're using your laptop, uh, just taking all the information um, and know, uh, I'm sure that usually in certain presentations, they do give their contact information. So take that down. If it's an email, um, you know, make sure to send an email, you know, probably like a day after or two days after um, while it's fresh in the recruiter's mind, um, just knowing that, okay, I just um, spoke with UConn. And so, you know, I would probably be open to knowing that there'll be a couple emails from the students, um, you know, kind of thanking me and wanting to, you know, give their, you know, kind of like a, an e-meet uh, or a little um, spiel about themselves, uh, just so I can know in the future uh, if they'd want to apply for whichever, um, you know, application uh, intern window, internship window, then I'd know, oh yeah, this was the person from, um, you know, this specific place. So definitely taking in all the information, um, you know, not everything, but everything that seems very interesting to you, uh, kind of narrow it down, um, and then send emails out, um, you know, kind of just introducing yourself. Absolutely, that's definitely so important to do as a follow up. Um, it really does make a world of a difference when candidates do that. But I would say for a student going into it, so this is what I used to do before every career fair, I would go through the list, right, of all the employers that were gonna be there. I picked out like my top 10. And because it was in person back then, so I probably only had time to go about like five booths, but pick out a handful of um, employers that you're really excited about, go on their website, go on their LinkedIn page, and just think of like one or two things that you either found interesting about the company or question that you have about the company. It doesn't have to be anything too specific, but doing just that little bit of research will put you above like 90% of the people that would be talking to them. So the research really goes a long way. Yeah, and, and you know, it is kind of similar in that way, Ashley, with the virtual career fair, because with setting up those one on ones, you're right, you may only have time, you know, throughout your day to to have five meetings. Um, so think about who you absolutely would like to meet with prepare. Um, but then if you do have some extra time, you can join those group sessions and things like that kind of, you know, on the fly, but you should you should prepare and, and know who you want to talk to. And actually, the virtual fair is set up that way that that uh, you, you have to sign up in advance for those one-on-ones. So very good point. Yeah, um, I would definitely echo all of those points. And I think um, with the virtual fairs, the time goes by in the one-on-one -on -one sessions like so, so fast. It, I, I'm assuming that this is on hand so it's like 10 minute, 15 minute session. So it goes by like literally in a blink of an eye. So definitely have your elevator pitch down to introduce yourself. There are times where I'm meeting with students in virtual career fairs and like half the time has gone by and they're still introducing themselves. And I'm like, this isn't an interview. This is more just to explain like who you are and your interest in my company and who I am and what we can offer you. And that should be kind of, I think how I, that's how I look at career fairs is like a brief introduction, what my company is and the questions that you may have about my company. Um, and it can be tough. And I think it's draining for, you know, both sides. If it's just like a, a long ramble of who you are and like, your whole resume, go in one minute, practice it, look at yourself in the mirror, give your pitch, and then you'll have like nine minutes to like have a recruiter's full attention, which is a really, I think, unique opportunity that you should take advantage of and not like, I don't want to say waste it, but not utilize half the time on like introducing yourself on things that could be found on your resume or handshake profile. Yeah, definitely. And for Morgan Stanley, actually, 
I don't do the one-on-ones. Um, the people who you're talking to are anyone from an associate to managing director. So they're people who you would be working with. And so, you know, having questions is probably the most important thing. Like we actually want, we want you to ask questions. It shows us that you're interested in the company that like you actually want to learn more. And if people who like don't have questions, like we kind of think to ourselves, you know, why are you actually like here? Like, do you want to learn about this? Or is it just, you know, kind of checking off a box? Yeah, and we also try to staff like alumni for like our fairs. If there are alumni who like work at Alpha Sites who went to UConn, like we try to staff them so that you can have a connection point um, and like hear about their experience, like transitioning from UConn to Alpha Sites or vice versa. So I think if there are alumni like from schools when you're like looking at the career fair, like try to talk to them as well because they can offer you a good perspective as well um, and to what the responsibilities are for the roles that you want to apply to. All right, I think we have time for one more question. We have six minutes left. So if anybody has a question or panelists, if, if you have any other last points that you'd, you'd like to offer. And so I will ask this as kind of a final question. Um, how can students follow up? So if they are interested in learning more about your organization and opportunities, are they posted on Handshake? Should they reach out to you on LinkedIn? What, what's, the, what's the best way to get in touch after this? Yeah, so I can go. So um, I'll give a little bit of insight into right click. So what we do, we, um, we like to actually recruit people right out of college, and then we train them on the recruiting process. And then you're open up to like a whole wide of different roles to recruit for. So a lot of our people that started working here, they had degrees from all over. So um, if you are interested, it would be great, you can reach out to me, or you can also go on our LinkedIn site or on our website rightclick.com. We're located right here in Norwalk, Connecticut. And um, just honestly reach out to any of the recruiters there and we'll be happy to connect you with um, more information. So I'm just going to share my email on the chat. Um, so if you have any further questions um, at all, you can just email me or if you just want to introduce yourself, um, please go ahead and do so. Um, we have our internship, uh, summer internship that's coming up. Uh, the deadline is April 8th, so uh, less than a month to go ahead and uh, put in your um, all the uh, required documents and materials uh, for the internship. You can call our office 203-333-6600. Um, um, and I know Tara will have all that information. So if anyone is, you know, um, interested, they can, you know, definitely connect with her, connect with me. Um, and so, um, you know, our, as I said before, the deadline is April 8th, and it will be from April to August. So it's the, basically the entire summer. Um, so, you know, please go ahead and go on our website as well, himes.house.gov, and you'll be able to see all the information um, you need. And I see that um, for me that you put your information in the chat. Thank you. So for me, I actually have a pharmacy management divisional 101 on March 21st. So that event is actually up on Handshake as well as coffee chats, you know, later that week. So that's you know how you sign up for my events. Um, I'm going to say try you're free to connect with me on LinkedIn. However, please try not to like to message me just because I'm not necessarily allowed to like contact you through that. If you need to reach me, please go like just email me. My email is at may.rdd at morganstanley.com. So just my name at morganstanley.com. Um, and also I am on Handshake as like a premium seat. So if you just want to message me through Handshake, that's also an option. Thank you so much. I know that's always a question. Um, what is the etiquette about connecting on LinkedIn and messages? So thank you so much for um, for all of you for for explaining the, the various ways that um, students can follow up. Really appreciate that. All right. Well, I think that concludes our program. I'm just going to check to see if there's any other uh, questions. Oh, OK. One more question. I think we and maybe if one person wants to answer this, what kind of questions should we ask recruiters during the one on ones? Um, so we have like one minute for that. 
what's one thing that would happen at this company that wouldn't happen anywhere else? My career center told me that's like the best question to ask. And I've asked that question through every single interview I've done. And it's like the one question that stumps every, everyone. So definitely use that. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, and I, I'm Oops, sorry. sorry. Another question would be, um, why are you working in this organization or why are you working for? Um, so I think kind of bringing it, um, you know, really personal, making it personal for your recruiter, uh, just to give you a little background and open up a little bit. Thank you. So I will say prior to the career fair, we have a prepare for the fair dress for success program on March 21st and 22nd. Um, we're collaborating with Huskies for Charity and the Affinity uh, Center for that. So that's gonna be in Gen Re. So you can actually uh, gain some professional clothing um, as well as talk about how do you prepare for the career fair? What questions to ask, practice your elevator pitch, get a critique of your resume. So definitely stop by and then you can always schedule an individual appointment um, with our center as well. Um, but I wanna thank our panelists again so much. Uh, this was really insightful. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days. And uh, thank you to the Psychology Club for your partnership on this event.